Thought I would give you a little vlog style video of some quick and easy dinner recipes that don't require any prep. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Jordan. Welcome to my channel. I am a future nurse practitioner. I'm in graduate nursing school. I work as a health coach. I love making videos for you guys that are mostly lifestyle vlogs, lots of healthy recipes, content also on hormone balancing for women, lots of nutrition and health tips for feeling optimal in preventing chronic illness, which is a passion of mine. Tonight is a Monday night. I just started back to school. It's the beginning of spring semester. And so I really wanted to find some good, easy, healthy, quick recipes, especially on those late nights I'm going to be having. I'm gonna show you three different recipes. We've got vegan, vegetarian, omnivore options, but all are made with whole foods, no sugar. I think all are grain free and gluten free. It's gonna be nourishing for blood sugar balance and leave you feeling satisfied and not craving sweets after dinner. Whole setup here. I know it's tempting to like get started with cooking, but I do think chefs know what they're talking about when they say to get all of your ingredients out ahead of time and set them up so you're ready to go. It's called your mise en place. I do think that tip is helpful. Steamed mashed sweet potatoes. I just have three sweet potatoes here. It's about 600 grams of potatoes, but it's like two medium and one little one. I just very, very roughly peeled them. You could leave the skin on if you like it a little more rustic, but I just gave them a little peel. We'll need some garlic, some thyme, and some olive oil for that. I'm just gonna chop them up and get them in the steamer. They'll steam in about 10 minutes if you chop them small enough. Over here, I've got some fresh broccoli. These are just two big broccoli crowns. I'm gonna chop that up into smaller florets, and they're going to cook on a sheet pan with some wild salmon. I got some wild sockeye salmon pieces from Whole Foods. I buy them frozen and I do let them thaw. It's just much cheaper to do it that way and it's really important to me to make sure I buy wild salmon. So those are gonna go on a sheet pan with the broccoli and we are going to season them with some flavored lemon and garlic oil. So I'm using avocado oil for my high heat cooking. I've got some garlic powder. I'm gonna zest a lemon. I do have a little bit of nutritional yeast. I like to add that to the broccoli, kind of like adding Parmesan cheese, which you could add if you like Parmesan or do eat dairy. Let's get this dinner started. It's gonna be ready in less than 30 minutes. like a ton of sweet potato here. I think it always like looks like so much more when you chop it up. This is actually a pasta basket, but I use it to steam veggies. We just need to bring a pot of water over a like kind of a little bit of a boil rolling simmer. This gets inserted into here and you put the lid on and the sweet potatoes will steam in 10 to 15 minutes or until when you put a fork or a knife through, it pierces easily. In the meantime, I'm just gonna make a really quick sauce that is going to be mashed in with the sweet potatoes. So we need two generous tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. This is kind of like in place of using butter which you would normally use in like a mashed potato. It's just gonna give them lots of flavor, make them silky and creamy. A little bit of fresh garlic, equivalent of one clove or half a teaspoon. Thyme leaves here go so well with grains and potatoes. Take the leaves off and just add them in like that. One teaspoon of salt, fresh black pepper. Whisk that up. Set it aside until our potatoes are done. We'll mash it all together. We're ready to make the sauce that's going to flavor our salmon and our broccoli. We're starting with some avocado oil. I'm gonna do two to three tablespoons. I like to just eyeball it. Zest of one lemon. Save the lemon for slicing at the end and juicing over the hot salmon and broccoli. Half a teaspoon of salt, pepper, quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder, quarter of a teaspoon of onion powder. Put that all together. I'm just going to dry the top of my salmon to make sure that when I put the oil or the marinade on it, it sticks really well and it will get a nice kind of crust. Perfect. I have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper. Add my broccoli, two thirds of my oil that I made earlier with the lemon zest and the garlic and the onion powder onto the broccoli and toss to coat. To make room for our salmon, I one piece 
here. Piece here. The rest of our oil to the salmon, because that's the marinade. And that oil is gonna give it a nice crust. And clean hands, just smush it all over the salmon. Looks like it's done. Broccoli has some like golden brown spots, so I know it's nice and roasted. Everyone's oven is a little different, and depending on how big or small your pieces are, it will change the cooking time, so I recommend just keeping an eye on it. While it's hot, I like to sprinkle a little bit of nutritional yeast over the broccoli. It's kind of like adding salt at the very end. It just absorbs it, it's that nice nutty flavor. But again, this is where you could add Parmesan cheese or whatever you like, maybe some red chili flake. mentioned at the beginning of making this recipe that it is inspired by my mom because every Monday she makes salmon broccoli and sweet potatoes so I wanted to put my own little spin on it hopefully she would be proud of this see you tomorrow for the next recipe welcome to the next night we are cooking dinner we just got home from a walk with the dogs it's a little after six o'clock we getting some better light and if I'm being honest I really do not want to cook there was definitely conversations on the way home of getting takeout. But my tip for being resilient and sticking to your meal plan during the week and not ordering takeout is remembering how much better you feel after having a home cooked meal versus having a takeout meal. I know the next day, sorry, Jackson's drinking water. I know the next day I feel bloated. There's a lot of sodium in takeout food and knowing that I have really quick and easy ingredients that are ready to go. So tonight is definitely like a from the freezer night. I am making a beef stir fry. I'm using this uh, grass fed ground beef that I get from a local farm. It's in one pound. We probably won't eat the whole thing, but I'm gonna cook that up. And then I've just got some stir fry veggies, just a big old mix of mushrooms, broccoli, peppers, snow peas, some onion. I think there's some carrot in there. We're gonna put it on top of this pilaf style rice cauliflower. I found this at Whole Foods. So it's actually rice cauliflower that's already flavored, which is gonna save me, you know, a couple extra steps. And on these vegetables that are always flavored, I always check the ingredients just to make sure there's no hidden sugars or weird ingredients going on. Also wanted to mention too, since I have recently changed my diet and I did a whole video about that, transitioning from, you know, 100% plant-based to adding some animal um, products back into my diet. I don't eat uh, red meat very often. I would say we have it maybe like once every other week, if that. So tonight happens to be one of those nights. But if you are vegan, vegetarian, plant-based, it's Meatless Monday, or someone in your family is, I think stir fry is a really great flexitarian meal because you can make all the vegetables and the rice or the cauliflower rice or the noodles separate. And then in one skillet, you could cook up, you know, if you have like some frozen chicken or frozen ground beef, you can cook that up. You could also cook up some tempeh or throw some edamame in the microwave, just warm it up. And then everybody can choose their own protein to have on top of the stir fry. To season our stir fry, we're going really simple here. I've just got some minced garlic. I'll probably add about a teaspoon to the veggies and the beef. We've got an orange. I had already used some of this orange, but I'm going to juice the rest of the orange into the skillet. I'm going to add some coconut aminos, but you could use tamari or soy sauce. This is going to be like our salty, yummy flavor to go into the stir fry. I'll probably add two tablespoons. And then at the end, after the heat's off, I'll add probably a teaspoon or so, maybe even half a teaspoon. Toasted sesame oil is pretty strong, and you don't want to add it to really high heat. So I'll add a little bit of that in at the end. And then I've got some cilantro that I'll probably add to my plate. Jack is not a cilantro fan, so that'll all be for me. I don't bother to dirty another dish and mix all this up. I just add it right to the pan with the veggies.
really like adding the salty coconut aminos and the orange juice because the orange juice is kind of sweet the coconut aminos is salty so I love like a sweet and salty kind of mix in a stir-fry and if you look at any stir-fry sauces you're gonna see that a lot of them have like something salty and something sweet like sugar or something added to them so that's why I add the orange mm -hmm. It's the final night of these quick and easy no prep dinner recipes to make after work I just finished up my work day. I did a little like 20 minute yoga It was a really nice way to transition from the work day to Being at home and relaxing and that is what I'm going to do. It's a very chilly day today in Ohio So I'm really glad I planned this recipe for tonight. It's a butternut squash and lentil chili So it's a vegan recipe. I still like to have two to three vegan meals even like two to three vegan days a week if not more just because then I'm getting tons of veggies lots of fiber I just think that's a good way to keep everything balanced that's what we're making tonight. Let me show you everything that you're going to need. Some type of cooking oil. I like avocado oil for higher heat cooking. Some vegetable broth. You'll just need two cups or more depending on how like chunky or soupy you like your chili. You'll need some onions. I told you guys this was no prep so I just got some chopped onions already chopped up. Don't have to dice my own onion which is nice. We have some frozen butternut squash. We don't have to dice up our own butternut squash tonight. We have some cinnamon, some cumin, some cayenne. I have some tomato paste in here. I opened up a can of it for another recipe. So we need two tablespoons of that, some garlic, and half a cup of lentils. Add a tablespoon or so of avocado oil. Using a 12 ounce bag of onions, but it's probably about one large onion diced up teaspoon and a half or so of minced garlic. I like to add a little salt and pepper to the onions and the garlic. It really helps when they're on the stove to help them sweat and release their moisture and just make sure everything is flavored really, really well. I add salt and pepper at almost every layer when I'm making a soup or a sauce. Here we go. And I'm just going to stir that up and I've got it going over medium high heat probably for about five minutes or until the onions are Translucent our onions have been simmering. They're nice and translucent So we are ready to add the rest of the ingredients So I'm gonna go ahead and add two tablespoons of this tomato paste Tomato paste is like key in chili it gives it such a rich tomatoey flavor There's one and two give that a big stir. Now we're going to add our spices. I always add the spices for chili before adding the liquid. That way they can toast a little bit on the bottom of the pan and it's nice and hot. Two teaspoons of ground cumin. Cumin is what is going to make this soup nice and warming and taste like chili. You need one teaspoon of cinnamon. Now don't worry about it being sweet. Cinnamon goes so well with butternut squash and it's honestly usually the secret ingredient in really good chilies You got to do a quarter teaspoon of cayenne or more if you like it spicy Give that a stir again just to get all those Spices toasted and we'll go ahead and add our lentils. I Love using lentils on a weeknight because they cook so fast. This is going to cook in 25 minutes once it's all on the stove. One teaspoon of salt. I'm using low sodium broth, so we need to flavor it up. Some pepper. Butternut squash. And give that all a big stir so the butternut squash is coated with all of the spices. Oh, this is smelling so good. Two cups of low sodium vegetable broth. I'm going to add it back to the burner, bring the heat up to high so we can bring it to a boil. Once it's at a boil, we will put it back down to like a medium low so it's just slightly bubbling or simmering. And then we'll set a timer for 25 minutes, leave it uncovered, then we'll have a delicious butternut and lentil chili. I'm 
going to garnish with some lime and some chopped green onions. That is our chili. I am gonna go eat my chili. This would be awesome with like some tortilla chips crumbled on top. You could like dip them in there. You could add, you know, cheddar cheese if you eat dairy. Mm. So, ooh, even like some crumbled, like raw feta might be really, some like crumbled like feta, like a local goat milk feta. Sometimes I have that in the fridge. That would be really good on top. Some nutritional yeast to keep it vegan. That would add that like cheesy, salty bite. Or some avocado, drizzle of olive oil, whatever you want to like jazz up your chili. And no one would ever guess that this came together in less than 30 minutes and had like zero prep for the ingredients. I hope you guys enjoyed these after work dinner recipes. Let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite and let me know of any video requests you have. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell so that you can be notified when I upload. I'll see you soon for another one. Bye!